What is going on guys? It's your boy Sydney here with you this afternoon. And I know I said I was going to do a video on my returning back from NZ, but I got an even better story for you this afternoon. And you guys are going to love this. So if you've seen the thumbnail to this video, you will see the absolute soy boy that uh, is behind it. Now the name of this particular soy boy is George Harrison. And uh, for those of you who have not actually seen a video, of, a picture of George Harrison, I'm actually going to bring you one up because I'd just like to give you, I guess, a little bit of context around um, exactly who this guy is. And my, this particular, this old phone's a bit slow, so just give me a moment here. But um, from the title, you probably notice that something's a little bit interesting. Uh, and essentially what has happened is this individual, George, Har George Harrison, has written a hit piece on MGTOW. And a lot of you guys will already know about this, and it featured Big John and a couple of the big MGTOW names. And he goes through, and the, literally the title is, These men hate women so much they've sworn off sex and refuse to speak to them. All right, that's the title of this hit piece on MGTOW. Uh, you guys know that's... Compl like some of you feel that way the majority of you just hate what they're allowed to get away with um, and hate the entitlement and the uh, the narcissism but uh, I digress anyway it appears that Mr. Harrison didn't realize that three days prior to him writing this uh, what could only be described as a uh, an opinion piece there was actually an article which gave complete and utter justification. All right, so I'm going to go through the article that George wrote, and then I'm going to actually go to the article that uh, they wrote three days earlier. And I've also provided a link to a bunch of other articles below, also at The Sun. So here we go. These men hate women so much they've sworn off sex and refused to speak to them. Meet the men going their own way. All around the world, at least 60,000 men are opting out of relationships with women, even giving up dangerous and addictive sex and going monk to avoid contact with them. He says, You wouldn't guess it from everyone's desire to couple up on Love Island, but thousands of men are so fed up with women that they're cutting them out of their lives completely. These disgruntled dudes united in their hatred of the opposite sex are known as MGTOW, a picture of the author. Just let that sink in. His Twitter is George underscore has, that is G-E-O-R-G-E -E underscore H-A-Z if you would like to go and uh, have some discussions with Mr. Harrison. But I digress. Let me continue in this article. These disgruntled dudes, united in their hatred of the opposite sex, blah, 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 blah. Uh, members of MGTOW, pronounced MGTOW, communicate almost entirely online. Sex is off the cards. Relationships are banned. Marriage is the ultimate no-no. And if you reach the top level of the MGTOW hierarchy, you're expected to quit your job and move off grid so you don't even have to look at women. Ask these when my men why, and they'll tell you it's because women can't be trusted. They're manipulative. They'll suck the joy out of your life and rinse you for every penny you have in the process. Browse their men-only forums and you'll also read the argument that society has become stacked in women's favor with unequal divorce settlements, higher male suicide rates, and false rape accusations cited as proof that fellas are being screwed over. Uh, <laughs> men going their own way, like MGTOW YouTuber Big John says women are impossible to be with. That's my boy Big John. MGTOW is freedom. He was uh, one of the guys that really, really inspired me in many, many ways uh, to, to start my own channel and speak my truth uh, and be here for you guys today speaking about this particular topic and all of the other topics I've spoken about almost every day since December. 
Here we go. The five levels of hierarchy. There's reportedly an unofficial hierarchy within MGTOW groups based on how committed men are to ejecting all women from their lives. Level zero, embrace the idea that gender equality is a lie and propaganda. You can't even spell propaganda right, the cuck. Level one, reject all long-term relationships. Level two, reject all short-term relationships and stop having sex. Level three, only interact with wider society where you have to. Level four, completely disengage from society. Uh, first, he speaks about men going monk. It, and he says, it all sounds like a bit of a joke, but 60,000 very serious men are subscribed to the anonymous MGTOW message board on Reddit, while thousands more belong to similar forums elsewhere on the web, including MGTOW.com. Virginity is a common talk topic on the Reddit. Uh, and many say they have pr proudly chosen to never have sex, describing their devotion to celibacy as quote unquote, going monk. A deep fear of false rape accusations is one of the driving forces behind this, while other men are wary of women using sex as a way to get to their wallets. <laughs> quote unquote, I want to die a virgin, writes one unnamed poster, saying that the hashtag Me Too movement has made sex too risky to be worthwhile. Many of the men who agree with the MGTOW movement, like YouTuber LFA, say giving up women will make you rippier and hatcher. Sorry, richer and happier. Um, men on Reddit talk about their desire to die without ever sleeping with women. Sex is dangerous and addictive, according to some men on the Reddit. Quote, unquote, nothing wrong with not having sex, one man replies. Quote, unquote, it's addictive, addicting and potentially dangerous. Quote, unquote, I would much rather be a virgin my whole life than be a slave. Another agrees, but bizarrely others see no problem with paying for sex. Quote, unquote, most prostitutes are honest women and most women are honest, dishonest prostitutes. As one man puts it, and many more say a combination of prostitution and sex dolls has allowed them to end all other relationships with women. Uh, and then they've got a picture of a meme that says, if you cannot find a good companion to walk with, walk alone like an elephant roaming the jungle. It is better to be alone than be with those who will hinder your progress. And who could logically argue with that? Who could honestly logically argue with that? That's perfectly logical and normal and rational train of thought. I mean, to, to consider that that's irrational is just absurd. I'm sorry, but makes no logical sense. But then again, not much of what this guy said so far does. Uh, MGTOW says the age, idea of detaching from all female relationships is age old. Disparaging comments about women are commonplace on the men only forums for MGTOW. Well, gee, uh, men, disparaging comments about men aren't common at all in TV or the mainstream media or the government or government officials or on Facebook or on Twitter or on any feminist, um, on any feminist, uh, I guess, online space or really anywhere where there's a bunch of women congregating together and talking about men. It has been reported that members can achieve different levels within the MGTOW community based on how committed they are to abandoning women. Level zero at the bottom of the ladder involves swallowing the red pill. Terminology from sci-fi classic The Matrix, which means understanding how things really are. As you work your way up through levels one, two, and three, you gradually scale back contact with women until you reach level four, the extreme point when you are uh, up sticks and leave the matriarchy behind by moving to a cabin in the woods. And then there's there's this meme at, meme at the top for those of you guys who've seen it. It says, misandry and freedom. And the caption says, taking the red pill is a bitter pill to swallow. Ingesting it is refreshingly liberating after you have rid the mind of social conditioning. Absolutely correct. I agree 100% with that. Uh, it says, it's not a movement in a conventional sense, bound by an official members list, but many that subscribe to its school of thought use the MGTOW logo. There is no MGTOW movement, quote unquote. Uh, one unnamed forum user tells Sun Online, quote unquote, there are individuals realizing that the deck is stacked against those that choose to try to engage in traditional relationships and are opting out. Another explains, quote unquote, we're just a bunch of men who've decided to live our alone, lives alone, peacefully, without outside interference or validation. And that's perfectly reasonable, right? Right? 
Uh, YouTube videos about MGTOW include a clip by a man called the Enlightened Kiwi, who, where he talks about marriage being a waste of time and resources. Um, women are programmed to ruin lives, uh, he says. While the buzz around MGTOW mostly exists online, the movement has been known to occasionally creep into the real world. A smattering of men going their own way including a man in a hazard tape dress with MGTOW emblazoned on the front, were filmed at a feminist rally in Edmonton, Canada, a couple of years ago. One man holding a sign saying, Feminism is a refuge for women's sexual failure, told a reporter. Um, men have decided to no longer participate in relationships with women as a result of the issues with family courts, false rape allegations, and slander coming from feminists. Now, uh, not to disrespect this guy, but... Uh, have a quick dig at this dude, right? Not exactly um, someone that's going to be... I don't know. I, I feel like he's uh, someone that feminists have put there to uh, to make MGTOW look like an absolute joke. So, um, yeah, that's an interesting one. And someone, someone tweeted... Blah, blah. Women's sexual failure. Wah, wah. Says Don Juan here. Dressed fetchingly in his hashtag MGTOW hefty trash bag and crime scene tape. Um, YouTuber Big John claims women are a nuisance which men don't need. Meanwhile, in a YouTube clip with 150,000 views, a, men, a man calling himself Big John explains over a glass of scotch why the MGTOW philosopher, why the MGTOW philosophy is proving so popular. There is a concept that men, men need a woman, he says, swilling his whiskey, but I find women to be a nuisance. Quote, unquote, I've tried to have them as girlfriends and they've been terrible. When you talk about getting a woman, are you, are you willing to pay the price? A YouTuber called LFA says in a video with 35,000 views, you are running backwards if you chase after a woman. Hopefully you're so focused on your money that you aren't even paying attention to women. Uh, quote, unquote, Marriage is a waste of time, money, energy, and resources, agrees a man called the Enlightened Kiwi in another video with over 160,000 views. And another MGTOW YouTuber, True Grit Productions, has wrapped up 50,000 views on a video about how terrible Los Angeles women are. Elsewhere on the anonymous message boards, threads are dedicated to discussing how much they all hate white knights. Men who unquestionably jump to women's defense in the hope of hooking up with them. Gee, a bit like the author of this article. The only kinds of people they hate more, other than women, of course, are manginas, male feminists, and chads, attractive jocks. And uh, Carly Marie says, my love is free, but the sex is extra. And that's kind of the point, right? You women cost too much right? Too many of you actually want men to pay for you and your time, right? When you want us just as much as we want you, but we're not paying for it anymore. In other posts, MGTOW members share anecdotes about their messy divorces, post memes they've made, or talk about cutting off female family members who disagreed with them, aka uh, feminist family members. Quote unquote, most mothers are terrible people. One post rages, quote unquote, how can a sane person hang out with a woman? What a waste of life. Now, those two particular uh, quotes, I would say, may be a little more radical. But, um, you know, there are elements of truth to it, depending on the context of the situation. For men who claim to be removing women from their lives, they sure love talking about them. Now, I love this meme. Chicks matching purses to clothes, but can't match babies to daddies. But that's none of my business. MGTOW memes are often shared all over the group's Facebook and Reddit pages. And then he talks about MGTOW versus MRAs versus incels. Smash that thumbs up, guys. Only a quarter of you. Come on. You can do better than that. All right. M MGTOW versus MRAs versus incels. The MGTOW banner is broad and has some overlap with online alt-right communities in their rejection of feminism and gender equality. <laughs> uh, yeah. 
But while you think that MGTOW and men's rights activists would have a lot in com common, the two groups frequently clash online. They both despise feminism, but where MRAs want to change the law to get rid of the perceived imbalance against men, MGTOW want to remove themselves from society entirely. Um, MGTOW are also distinctly different from incels, which are involuntary celibates, the group which the Toronto van attacker belonged to. There we go, associating uh, guys who can't get laid with terrorists, right? And of course, you're only going to say that about white men, aren't you, your mangina? Both groups revolve around celibacy, but this is supposedly a conscious choice for MGTOW while incels want to have sex. Another quote here, thanks to MGTOW, I can live in peace. The MGTOW school of thought is fairly new, having sprung up online in the 2000s when two men calling themselves Solaris and Ragnar published a MGTOW manifesto, and there is a link to it in the article, which I've linked below, claiming that feminism is anti-men and that uh, men should escape from it. However, the idea of men packing it all in to abandon womankind is as old as the hills, while the MGTOW website claiming that Jesus Christ himself was one of the first men to go his own way. Well, I don't blame him, because uh, that whole Virgin Mary bullshit, I'm not buying it. Mary was taking the dick on the side. She was smashing other dudes. And Joseph was just a cuck boy. And I'm sorry to any of you guys who are religious. right? I'm not shitting on uh, the religion as a whole. I'm not shitting on Catholicism. But that particular uh, part of the story, I'm not buying for one moment. Anyone who wants to buy into that Virgin Mary story is, uh, you know, just being completely oblivious to reality in my personal opinion, um, each to their own. Men who go their own way say they are making a rational choice to escape the ills of womankind. MGTOW has its own logo, even though many followers say it's not a movement in the normal sense. On the MGTOW website, men share testimonies about how much uh, the, their lives have improved since cutting out women. One reads, and I quote, thank you MGTOW for teaching me young and preventing me from the lies women and marriage bring. I can now live in peace quote unquote, was engaged for a year and just blew it off another man writes, screw that death sentence. You can't help but imagine the women who used to be in their lives might be that much better off as well. Oh, aren't you such a good little shamer, George? Aren't you such a good little shame tactic user? Anyway, guys, um, that is the end of that article. Uh, although I would strongly suggest to you guys, if you get the chance, Go and check out the link in the video below. Now, the article that was posted three days earlier, also on the Sun website that he clearly was unaware of, and if he was aware of it, he had not, he didn't have the IQ to make the link. Let's check this out. All right, and this article link is also in the description below. It says, Dear Deidre, he's rubbish in bed. My sex life is boring and I feel like I'm wasting time staying with my husband. I'm sorry if that reads backwards, guys, but there's some screwiness happening with the YouTube app. Deirdre, Deirdre, for some reason I keep picking fights with my husband. I'm unhappy and feel like I'm wasting my life. He's 42 and I'm 43. He is a good man and a very good dad, but he's boring as hell. Our sex life has never been great. Once a month and over in two minutes. He does lots around the house, but never makes me feel special. He never comes up with ideas. He just does what I suggest. Probably because uh, when you suggest things and he says something else, you say you don't want to do that. Just a thought. He never goes out with his mates and that makes me feel guilty for having a night out with mine. I'm totally drained and I feel like I've missed out on a much better life. My children are teens now. I need to be thinking of me. Hmm. Very, very, very interesting. Let me look at another article here. Right? This article reads, and these are all articles that are backing up the argument for MGTOW. Completely backing up the article from MGTOW. <laughs> I 
Carly, I know that you think the Virgin Mary is a model for women not to be hoes, so you disagree with me on that point. Um, how is a role model of someone who got pregnant but said she didn't have sex? So she's a cheater and a liar. That's a great role model, isn't it? Okay. Um, here we go. My brother-in-law is my youngest daughter's real father and my husband has no idea. Dear Didri, I cannot resist the amazing sex I'm having with my sister-in-law's partner and he is my youngest child's father. I know I should stop, but it's better than with any than any sex I've ever had. I moved in with my then boyfriend five years ago, just before our son was born. The garden was a total mess. It looked like a junkyard. My partner's sister said that if we cleared it up, her boyfriend would come around and take the rubbish to the tip. When he first came to collect the rubbish, it was the first time I'd met him and he is incredibly hot. He is 34 now and my hubby and I are 28. A few months later, he told me he'd wanted me since he first saw me. I could not resist him and we ended up having wild sex, which has gone on ever since. My sex life with my husband stopped a year after our wedding three years ago. He just doesn't often seem bothered. I got pregnant last year and my daughter is three months old. My husband doesn't seem to have twigged, but I knew straight away that she wasn't his child. My lover has accepted she is his and says he will be, be there for her if she ever needs him, but that our relationship can never be anything more than it is now. We see each other a lot through family and friends and I told him the sex needs to stop. Then he started playing mind games with me. He tried to make me jealous by flirting with my best friend. And he was furious when he discovered that his best friend had made a move on me. I do not love my husband anymore. There is nothing between us. I have tried to leave him, but for the children's sake, it is just easier for me not, not to go. I don't know whether my lover has any real feelings for me. It's all too complicated. I know it ought to stop, but I've fallen head over heels for him. Right? Oh, what's his other article? Um, I loved my wild threesome with two men, but now my work colleagues know and they won't let me forget it. Hmm. Um... Let me have a look here. Spend the evening with two of them. Uh, she went, she got, they all got off their faces. They took me back to a house they share. It was a bit of a dump, so I told them I'd save for coffee. Then more drinks appeared and it got too late to leave. Guy I fancied put his arm around me and started kissing me. I was very drunk and, I, drunk and I responded. It was what I'd been hoping for, really. My clothes were off in record time and he was all over me. Uh, soon his friend joined in. What the hell, I thought it was too far gone to worry. Had a fantastic night of sex and I went to sleep happy. Um, I'm not happy now though. It's bad enough I had sex with those guys. The thought of other people watching is really doing my head in. I feel so exposed and embarrassed. To, uh, so I got back to the mates and yeah. Uh, whatever. See, and it's all of this bullshit, right? Fam. Here we go. Blackmailed. I've been betting my uncle and now his son is blackmailing me into having sex. So you've been banging your uncle. Great stuff. Perfect fucking thing to do. What a great idea. Such a such a top chick. You know, any guy would be lucky to have you. Um And then here's another one. This is a corker, and this isn't. If you go to the, if you go to the the dear Deidre link that I have there, to the um, article, but there's basically proving why MGTOW is important. You'll also be able to flick through and find this. Festive fail. I had incredible sex with a girl at Glastonbury, then found out I was the twentieth guy she'd bedded that weekend. I'm 21 and this girl is 18. I hadn't had sex since I split up with my ex-girlfriend almost a year ago. Lots of girls have wanted to go out with me, but no one seemed that special. I jumped at the chance to go to the Glastonbury Festival with a group of friends when one of them had to cancel. Uh, I'd had a fantastic time and on the last day I was queuing up for food when I got chatting to the girl behind me. We just started talking about the music which bands we'd seen there and what music we liked. She was gorgeous and I was really into her. We ate our food and spent the rest of the day together. I felt we were becoming genuinely close. We held hands and kissed. When she suggested we spend the night together I agreed straight away and she came back to my tent. Um, the sex was awesome. Even though we were pretty cramped. She seemed to know what she was doing and it was wonderful. There's a reason she seemed to know what she was doing. 
She'd had a bit too much practice. I was a bit shocked when she told me the next morning that I was the 20th person she'd had sex with at the festival. It almost sounded as if she was going for a target. I was stunned that she could have sex with so many men in just a few days. Uh, but I didn't say anything and she didn't seem to notice the look on my face. We agreed to exchange numbers when we said goodbye and we've been keeping in touch regularly by text. She's a really nice girl and I do like her. But now that I'm back home, I'm starting to wonder whether I should be worried she seems to sleep around. I can't help but question whether I should bother with someone like that. Right? And, and here we go. And Deidre, who's giving the advice to this guy, says, I can understand why you're hesitating. Love and sex are very special. And she gives them away too cheaply. Most of these other guys were probably only interested in the sex and she encourages them to think of her like that. On the other hand, you were keen to have sex with her the day you met, so don't be too hypocritical. Talk to her some more to find out why she had sex with so many guys at Glastonbury. Did she use effective protection? If not, you'll need to get a sexual health check. If you two... Here we go. Here's the, ki here's the kicker, guys. If you two are going to see more of a, one another, is she willing to commit to being faithful? Are you... She's an 18-year-old seasoned carousel rider. She's not going to be faithful. It may be that it was more about the special Glastonbury atmosphere than that you are right for one another. See, but look, I mean, this is the thing, right? This guy works for the sun, right? He's a reporter for the sun. He does this hit piece on MGTOW saying that it's all about men hating women. We don't hate women, right? We're just cautious. We just know better. We just know the red flags, right? We're aware. And we know that we don't have to give everything up to get what it is that we want, right? Why are you gonna hate on us for that, huh? Yeah. Right, and then people wonder why. Oh, Charlie Brown, can you send me the article on that to my email address, man? I have not heard about that, but it doesn't surprise me. I uh, was looking through some of the um, comments here. Good to see you. Xiaomi, Charlie Brown, Riff, Magos, Brizzy Boy, Charlie Jeans, uh, Elvin. Um, I mentioned Jazz Jive, MGTOW Farmer. We got everyone in here today. Um, ah, Carly's and Carly's here as well. We've got Zeus. What's going on, Zeus? Harmonic Live, Ollie Town, my man. Uh, who else we got here with us? Cleffer168. Good to see you. Bob, how you doing, man? You're right. That is the impact MGTOW is having. Um, we are growing and winning, but shaming tactics don't work on us. Exactly. And Adam, you're right. This is the lamestream media at its best. Fake name and photo. All it has done is brought MGTOW to the forefront. Metal Dude, you're right. This guy in the thumbnail is a massive cockboy. The guy who wrote this article. Thomas, good to see you as well. Lee Forrester, how you doing, man? How you doing? Uh, Brian Colley says, women want to behave in exactly in the way they mistakenly believe men do. They normally condemn the way men behave as toxic masculinity, then they want to behave in an exaggerated masculine fashion. And that is the ridiculous irony. And yes, I know all of you including the ladies in the box right now um, are saying 20 dicks in a weekend yes she's an eight of taking 20 cocks in one weekend and you thought my article on have sex with 25 guys before you settle down is a uh, was a corker man this takes the cake <laughs> um, but you know look it is what it is, and you just got to accept that if you're banging girls at a festival, you're probably not the first guy that she slept with at the festival, especially if it seems too easy. And uh, you know, and this is the typical mainstream media. They are uh, they they've got one thing in one article and another in the other. I don't know if you guys saw, and I probably do a video on this as well. They had the video of Trump being asked if he was a feminist. 
And he said, oh, I, I wouldn't go that far. You know, I'm for, for men, I'm for women, I'm for everybody. Right? And then everyone's saying, oh, well, you know, obviously you, you hate women because you're not a feminist. But then there's an article a couple of days ago from the Washington Post asking why women are not allowed to hate men. Like, are you fucking serious? The same publication, two completely contrasting things. It's almost like you don't even care that you look like morons. It's almost like you don't give a fuck as long as you get clicks. Well, actually, that's exactly what's going on. You don't care as long as you get clicks. And the clickbait uh, is easy. It's easier to make something into clickbait if you enrage women than it is to say something nasty about men. Right? You say something nasty about men, or you say something nice about women, or you say something nasty about women, that's good clickbait. You say something nice about men, no one wants to hear it. I mean, we do, obviously. You know, any other man wants to. And, uh, you know, some people say we're too easily triggered. Well, sorry, but I disagree. And let me tell you why I disagree. Because when you say triggered, it means you get fired up over something. And it's like, well, okay. If I get triggered over, uh, you know, someone wearing the same shirt as me to a nightclub, right? Well, that's kind of unreasonable, right? Because that's just ridiculous. It's just stupid bullshit. But, you know, if someone takes exception to being demonized by the fact, by virtue of his DNA, by, by virtue of the fact that he was born with a penis, by virtue of the fact that he was born with pale skin, right? Like, well, you want me to, want me to go get skin cancer just to get brown skin so that I'm not a... So I'm not a white male, white male. Like, you serious? Right? You want me? You want me to take the hit for shit that happened before I was born? And quite often was done by people that are dead before the people that are complaining about it were born. Like, it's just such a ridiculous joke. Such a ridiculous joke. Um. Brizzy Boy says, did you see the Sun article about the chicken that they gave a sex change to because it didn't want to be a rooster? So they did the operation and changed it to a hen. Oh, for fuck's sake. You know, it, it, and in the past I would have said, oh, that's just clickbait. But you know what, these days I'm just not sure, <laughs> really. I mean, that this is how ridiculous things have gotten. Um, what's going on, Homer Simpson? How you doing? And, uh, as Forrest Gump would say, that's all I got to say about that. But, uh, you know, it's just, it's just funny to see the mainstream media tripping over themselves, fucking themselves over every single time. And one thing I will say about respect as well, because I noticed a couple of you guys having a discussion about it in the comment section, respect is something that is earned. Um, you know, something doesn't need to be respected if someone doesn't deem it to be respectable. All right, so I'm never going to... And, and you guys would have noticed, like, I've never, ever, ever said, ever, not online, not in this, um, in this forum, I've never said to anybody, you have to respect me. Or, or that even that you should respect me. I've never said that. Because I don't believe in telling people they have to respect someone. You earn respect. Respect is earned not owed and it's not automatic and if any of you disagree with that go back and watch the first video i ever did go to my channel page hit the videos button at the top scroll all the way to the bottom till there's nothing more and click on that last video respect is earned and if you do if you do or say things or you have attributes about yourself that are respectable Right, that in my view are worthy of respect, then I will most likely be respect 
full towards you. I, I will act with respect towards you. And I talked about being respectful and respectable in my video this morning as well. Right, so it's no, no surprise to my followers uh, that I talk about this issue a lot. And respect, look, Brian, respect, uh, I, I would disagree with you on saying respect has to be reciprocal. Um, I don't actually, respect doesn't need to be reciprocal. And this is just my personal view. Um, and you know, like agree to disagree on that one. Uh, and the reason that I say that it doesn't have to be reciprocal, right? I can respect someone that doesn't respect or like me, right? Because they may do something. I might say, well, I don't like this guy, right? And I don't want to hang out with him, but I respect that he made that decision, right? I find the decision that he or she made to be respectable. Right? I find the decision that he or she made worthy of respect, right? Uh, so I can respect him, and he might even not not even know who I am. Right, so respect, in my view, doesn't need to be reciprocal. Um, although I would argue that if someone is being courteous towards you, then there is somewhat of an incumbent upon you to uh, reciprocate that courtesy. Um, you know, in you know, as a as as someone who is exhibiting common decency towards other human beings. That's just my personal view. Holy shit. I think I need a new, new master brake cylinder on my car. That was a little too soft for, for comfort. Um, Miktar Farmer says, I respect some people I hate for certain facets of their character, knowledge base or actions. Some people I love or have no respect for. Um, and, you know, for example, I did a video on uh, Clementine Ford not too long ago. And I actually said that I can respect, I don't respect Clementine Ford as a person, but I do respect that she is a purist feminist. And I respect that she is not uh, trying to pretend that feminism is about equality. Right? She openly states, feminism is not about men, it's about women. And it is. Right? And I can respect that she's one of the few high profile feminists to be completely honest about that, even if she is a complete C-U-N-T to men. Right? Even if she is a complete C-U-N-T to men. I can respect that she's at least honest about what feminism is and about the fact that, you know, she subscribes to the uh, doctrine of feminism in its purest form. Damn, it's itchy as hell. Uh, what's going on, Dave Ritchie? Apparently, we've um, apparently we've got a situation here where there's a news post today: 15-year-old girl died after mixing drinks with energy drinks. The whole article avoided the parents' responsibility. Of course it did, because it was probably the daughter of a single mother, and they don't want to throw the mother under the bus because vagina. Guys, what are your thoughts? I'd love to get uh, all of your opinions. When this video is finished, feel free to go and check out the comment section. Uh, you know, share your views on this. Please be respectful. <laughs> Carly says caffeine, alcohol and single mothers don't mix uh, alcohol and single mothers don't mix uh, caffeine just makes it a little bit worse um, yeah society now encourages and rewards men for despising rewards women for despising men yet these women uh, demand respect from men I cannot respect any group that has the default hostility to me that is exactly right that is exactly uh, my thoughts on the matter right down to a T. <sighs> anyway, guys, um, it's very, very good to see you all again. I appreciate you. And thank you so much for tuning in. And I do look forward to catching up with you on my next episode. 
Uh, if you have any juicy stories you'd like to share with me that you'd like me to do a topic on, uh, feel free to um, jump on over my email, sydneymigtow at gmail.com. And if you know, peace.